Hello, welcome to this lesson of the Linear Algebra Tutor. We've covered a lot of material so far. Uh, most recently, we've been talking about solving systems of equations. We've figured out that we, have, we can have consistent systems which have a single unique solution uh, for the set of equations. We can have inconsistent systems which don't have any solution at all for that system. And then we can have dependent systems which means there's an in infinite or an infinite variety of points that can satisfy the set of equations. So we've built our skills up and we've been using row reduction techniques to do that and you're kind of at this point starting to understand why matrices are really useful little animals. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start to continue working with systems of equations but we're going to talk about what we call homogeneous systems of equations. Homogeneous systems of equations. Now those of you who have uh, taken differential equations in the past which may or may not be some of you guys but whoever has you're going to start to see a little bit of similarity in what we're talking about here in relation to what you may have learned in a differential equations class. You certainly don't need to know any differential equations to understand this, but I'm just saying if you have taken that class, turn that part of your brain on and try to look for some parallels. I'm going to point them out to you as well. You're going to learn some things in here and we're going to tie it up in a nice bow, hopefully, um, that will jog your memory uh, in, in relation to something that you already learned. Okay, the first thing is, what is a homogeneous system of equations? What it means is, instead of having a bunch of equations with numbers on the right-hand side of the equal sign, it means that AX, instead of AX equals B, we just say AX is equal to zero. Homogeneous just means we have a coefficient matrix, then we have a column vector with X, Y, Z, or whatever we're solving for, but on the right-hand side of the equal sign, there's a zero. There's a zero. You might say, why do we care about that? It turns out that homogeneous systems of equations are, are very, very common in nature. When you build a system like an electric circuit or if you build a spring system or whatever, then the homogeneous version of the equation that describes the system is representing how you built the system. It's representing the components and the, and the connections and such. For a circuit, it might be uh, in relation to the components that you chose to put into the circuit. Now, if you have another set of equations with numbers on the right-hand side, or if you're talking about differential equations where you have functions, maybe cosines or sines on the right-hand side, then you're now driving your system with a forcing function. You're, you're, in other words, you've hooked up a function generator or a voltage source to your circuit and you're driving it. So the homogeneous version of the equations usually describe the system itself. When you have non-zero numbers here, you've got the whole enchilada including any driving functions that you're sending into your system. So kind of keep that in mind. I'm going to come back to that a little bit later. So when we have a homogeneous system like that, there's really only two possible ways you can solve it. The most simplest trivial case is if all of the variables that you care about, uh, x, y, z, in this case we'll call it capital X, if they're equal to zero. This is a solution to this equation when you think about it. If you have AX is equal to zero, a valid solution would be that X is equal to zero. But don't forget that this is not an equation from Algebra 1. This is a matrix equation. So A is a coefficient matrix. X represents two or three variables, maybe more. And what's on the right is usually numbers in this particular case. All right. So if we say x is equal to zero, what I'm saying is I have a system of equations. They're equal to zero. So I could say x is equal to zero, y is equal to zero, z is equal to zero. If I set all of those equal to zero, then by definition, this equation will be satisfied. Unfortunately, that's not a very interesting solution. Who gives a you-know-what if, if all of your variables are zero? That's not a real solution. I mean, it's valid, but it's not interesting. So if the 